keeping up with the motto that learning be a joy and teaching a pleasure. Here we are with the remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap. Happy learning, students. Hello, students. Today we are going to revise chapter number two of standard nine, endogenetic moments. In this chapter, we are going to study what are the different moments happening in the interior of the earth and what are the effects seen on the exterior of the earth. But before that, it is important for us to know about the interior of the earth. In the previous standard, we have studied the various layers of the interior of the earth. That is the crust, the mantle, the outer core and the inner core. Now the internal movements that affect the surface of the earth mostly take place in the upper portion of the mantle. We can see the mantle which is shown red in color. Now this mantle consists of magma in fluid condition and it's hot and flowing around the interior of the earth. Now crust is the exterior part what we can see green in color which includes land surface as well as the sea bed. Here we see the entire crust is not one part. I told you that the crust is not a one part. It is divided into different parts and it is called as tectonic plates. Now here we can see there are seven major plates and few minor plates. So in the given figure we can see there are various plates. For example, we can see the African plates the Australian plates, the Caribbean plates, South American plates. Now we can see these plates are linked to one another. So these plates are called as tectonic plates. Now sometimes these plates they collide with one another and the crust moves. So we can see the effect of this on the exterior of the earth in the form of earthquake and volcanoes, formation of mountains and continents. So we can see these plates which are joined to one another this plates, they are the place where earthquake and volcanoes take place. That is mainly near the plate boundaries. Now we will see the two different types of internal movements that are taking place in the interior of the earth. First one, slow movements. The movements in the interior of the earth that are caused by the continuous and slow emission of energy are called slow movements. Next one, that is the sudden moments. Sudden moments, at times there is a sudden release of energy in the interior of the earth. This gives rise to sudden and rapid movement. Generally, these movements, they take place in the earth's interior in the upper layer of the mantle. Let us see the effects of slow moments on earth's crust. Now, these slow moments lead to formation of mountains and continents. We also call orogenic movements which leads to formation of mountains and epiorogenic movement or continent building movement which leads to formation of continents. Now what are continents? The vast portion of land that appear over the sea level we call it as continent. In all we all know that there are seven continents on the earth. Next one in mountains there are two different types of mountains fold mountain and block mountain. Now how fold mountains are formed? As energy movement takes place in the interior of the earth, the soft rocks are subjected to compression. So as a result, wrinkles or folds are developed. This process is called as folding. For example, like Himalayan mountain range and these, as, these are the example of fold mountain. Now here in the given figure, we can see two fold mountains. In figure one, we can see how the energy waves are coming towards each other and then it leads to the rising of the earth's crust. That is the soft rocks are compressed and they are rising up. We can see the folds. In the second figure, we can see the folds. The folds are very large and they are acute. In this figure, we can see the block mountain. Now how block mountains are formed? In hard rock layers, the compression caused by the converging energy waves can lead to faulting. But when a portion of the crust between two parallel faults is raised up, it appears like a block. So in the given figure, we can see the top of the block mountain. It is flat 
whereas the slopes are steep. We have seen the effects of slow earth movement on the earth's surface. Now let us see the effects of sudden movements on earth's crust. Now these sudden movements give rise to earthquakes and volcanoes. Now what is an earthquake? Earth means the ground and quake means trembling of the ground. So earthquake is the movement of earth's crust. Now different type of waves are generated and we call these waves as seismic waves when earthquake takes place. That is primary waves, secondary waves and the surface waves. We are going to look out for volcanoes. Now what is a volcano? When hot solid, liquid and gaseous materials are thrown out from the mantle of the earth onto the surface of the earth. This process is called as volcanic eruption. So there are two different types of volcanoes. The first one is a central type volcano or you can call it as conical volcano and the second one that is a fissure type of volcano. Let us see what is the earthquake. As I told you previously, earth, that is, or it means ground and quake means trembling. Earthquake is the movement of the earth's crust. Let us revise the causes of earthquake. First, moving of the plates. Second, colliding of plates. Third, plates sliding one below the other. Fourth, occurring of volcanic eruption. So these are the various causes of earthquake. In the given figure, we can see the different types of seismic waves, which we also call it as P and S waves. In the first figure, we can see the hypocenter or the other word for the hypocenter is focus. So what is the focus? The point below the surface where energy is released during an earthquake is called the focus of the earthquake. That is also known as hypocenter. We can see epicenter written in the figure. The epicenter of a quake, it is located on the surface at point nearest to the focus. And in the second figure, we can see falls that are formed because of the earthquake. As soon as the energy is released below the earth's surface, there are different types of seismic waves which are generated. In the figure we can see the first one which is called as P wave that is also called as primary waves. Now these are the waves first to reach the earth's surface immediately after the energy is released in the interior. Now these waves they travel rapidly in the radial direction and they are called as primary waves. The second one what we can see S waves. Now this S waves are also called as secondary waves. These waves report at the surface after the primary waves. Now these waves also radiate in all the direction from the point of the focus of the quake. These waves are very destructive. The third wave which we can see L waves or we call it as surface waves. So after the primary and secondary wave affect the surface on reaching, as a result, a new set of waves is generated on the surface itself. Now these waves they spread along the circumference of the earth. Now due to these waves, the grains in the rock they move up and down also as well as side waves. That's why these waves are the most destructive. We can see the figure that is seismograph. Now what is a seismograph? The magnitude of an earthquake is measured in Richter's scale with the help of an instrument called as seismograph. As we have revised with the causes of earthquake, let us revise with the effects of earthquake. First, cracks, fractures develop on the ground. Second, causes landslides which leads to sliding of rocks. Third, some areas get uplifted while some may subside. Fourth, Tsunamis are generated in the ocean. Next, in snow-covered areas, avalanches may occur. And the last, loss of life and property.
Now let us see the effect of sudden earth movements in the form of volcanoes. Now what is a volcano? When hot solid liquid and gaseous materials are thrown out from the mantle of the earth onto the surface of the earth, this process is called as volcanic eruption. There are two different types of volcanoes. First one that is central type or conical volcano. In the given figure we can see this is a central type volcano. Now during this eruption we can see the molten magma lava that comes out through a pipe like or vent inside the earth's surface. So we can see the vent in the figure we can see the magma chambers and through the vent ash, dust, steam and gases are coming out. Now the lava it spreads around the mouth of this vent when it comes out and as a result cone shaped mountains are formed. So in this figure we can see the mountain cone shaped mountain is formed and the lava is ejected through the vent like structure. The second example what we can see here this is a fissure volcano. Now fissures that are cracks. Now during eruption when the magma comes out it doesn't come out from a vent but from many cracks or we can say fissures. And this is called as fissure type volcanic eruption. So the materials what are coming out with the eruption, these materials, they spread on both the side of the fissure. And as a result, volcanic plateaus are formed. The Mount Stromboli, which is located in the Mediterranean Sea. This is an example of active volcano. What is an active volcano? Now, these eruptions are regular even in the present time. So, this kind of volcanoes are called as active volcano. Like for example, Stromboli, then it is Mount Fuji in Japan. So, they are the active volcanoes. Again, we can see Mount Stromboli and this volcano what we can see that is lava coming out through the vent like structure. Now let us revise with the effects of volcanoes. First, land may become fertile due to volcanic ash. Second, many minerals are found near the earth's surface because of lava. Third, sometimes tsunamis get generated due to volcanic eruptions occurring below ocean floor. Next, loss of life and property. Topic, thank you all.